Welcome to A Noob's Guide to Marcus Wolfhart. This is Marcus Wolfhart, Hunt's Marshal of the Empire, which means he spends a lot of time outdoors and smells like a wet dog. Wolfhart has the same origin story as every great action movie of the 1980s, a hardworking, capable everyman who plies a trade with one exceptional skill that he will use to cut a swath of bloody revenge. Wolfie here was poacher in residence of the deep, dark Drakvald forest of Middenland. For non-rednecks, that, that's hunting, except you do it on someone else's property. And for the exceptionally urban among you, hunting is where you go looking for something, but really, really quietly. Though once you find the new iPhone 11, you don't murder it and then drape its carcass over your pickup for everyone to admire, so I, I suppose there are some differences. After a long day of showing rabbits and deer their place in the food chain, Marcus returned home to find that everyone in his village had been killed by a bone grinder giant, the Drakvald Cyclops. Crying manly tears that undoubtedly taste of cedar and axle grease, Marcus picked up his cell phone and told the giant that he didn't have any money, but what he did have was a very particular set of skills, skills acquired over a long career that make him a nightmare for monsters. And now he would hunt him, he would find him, and he would kill him. Marcus put an arrow into its only eye, blinding it Odysseus style, and then went to town with his hunting sword, doing his best audition for a Tarantino film until he finally chopped its head off. And undoubtedly, he then defecated down its throat, because somewhere in history, someone has to have done that, because it's a really weird and specific saying. You'll notice there's not a lot of jokes in this last section, because everything about Marcus Wolfhart is badass, and fulfills a secret middle-aged American male fantasy. Not that we want our families to die, but if they did, a concerning number would happily go death wish afterwards on whoever was responsible. The fire of his rage still unquenched, Marcus has taken his genocidal party on the road and now wanders from village to village, oppressing any monsters he comes across, declawing the misunderstood talon beasts of Stirland, making snow cones out of the beloved ice dragon of Ostermark, and forcibly segregating the chimera of Flamespire Peak, while also ending a rather lucrative tourism industry that built up around it. After receiving a bit of thanks from the local amorous lasses, he would then move on and spread whatever venereal disease he had picked up to the next town with a monster problem. But the good times can't last forever, and Wolfhart's antics eventually caught the attention of Emperor Karl Franz, who prides himself on having an eye for murderous potential, but Wolfhart's status as a monster killer was still amateur, so Karl Franz brought him to the Imperial City to see if Wolfhart wanted to go pro. Franzi Boy offered Wolfhart a knighthood and large tracts of land to quit carpet bagging his countryside. Wolfhart declined and asked to continue on his quest to bleach the brown stain of monsters from the underwear of the world, which is exactly what the Emperor wanted to hear, so he gave him all the titles and money he didn't ask for. Spreading open the clenched cheeks of the Imperial Vault, the Emperor extracted six feet of enchanted wood and gave Wolfhart an amber longbow imbued with auto-aim so egregious that even Call of Duty would ban it, so that whenever it looses an arrow, it always finds its mark, making it so that Wolfhart, as a character, combines the bow skills of Henry Cavill in Immortals with the facial hair of Henry Cavill in Tudors and the awesome monster-killing abilities of Henry Cavill in The Witcher, and if you removed his beard with CGI, Wolfhart would look like, okay, that was a mistake. And now in the Hunter and the Beast DLC, Wolfhart's unique services are required again, as Imperial colonists are being attacked by a mythical jungle spirit in the far-flung continent of Lustria. And so, like a page from the Ghost in the Darkness, it falls on the Great White Hunter to go and pacify the native wildlife. Now this fur-loving beaver trapper from Quebec finds himself in a tropical jungle, wondering if it is actually physically possible to sweat your balls off. Seriously, CA couldn't dress this guy for summer weather? Because, I mean, nothing says jungle adventurer like head-to-toe pelts and felt. You'll take control of the Imperial Expedition to the New World and use every means at your disposal to subjugate the native population while despoiling it of all its riches. And thanks to the new Emperor's Mandate mechanic, the more you steal, the more the fat cats back home will love you, and they'll send more and better equipment to help you claim these lands in the name of Spain, I mean the Empire. But you can't get too rapey pillagey, or the locals will get upset about it. Conveniently visualized here is a hostility meter decorated with the skulls of your fallen enemies. And the more pissed they get, the more military units are sent from back home to help you deal with these 
ungrateful upstarts. I realize this is supposed to be a deterrent mechanic, but I found myself committing war crimes just to get those shipments more often. And if you decide to go full Pizarro and max out that bar, a full army of scalies will spawn and pull a Montezuma's revenge on your ass if you're not ready for it, heading straight for your capital city and laying siege to it. It's really an amazing conquistador simulator CA has created here, and honestly all it's missing is an event where you give the locals smallpox for a truly historic experience. But turning Marcus Wolfhart into Hernan Cortez feels like one hell of a character shift, but I try to keep reminding myself that driving natives from their lands and murdering anyone who opposes me doesn't make me a bad person. I mean, after all, they're just Aztecs. I mean lizards, they're just lizards. To help with your not a conquest, Wolfhart brings the sweet roster of old Empire favorites along with new ranged units, which he recruits cheaply and buffs to high heaven. Archers are super cheap ranged units that I mean, they're archers. I think we've all played a Total War game or at least understand how bows and arrows work. I mean, if you're watching this from the 31st century, it might be confusing, but really even then, I doubt this knowledge has been lost. Huntsmen are Wolfhart's hand-picked, light-minded maniacs who live only to massacre anything not human. They're basically rangers if you're into Dungeons and & Dragons, and do the wood elf shoot and run thing about as well as the actual knife ears. And since they're a monster hunter squad, they get a bonus to large and vanguard deployment. War wagons are armored chariots packed with six armor-piercing outrider rifles. They're slow, but they constantly fire while moving in all directions, so you just charge them around and behind the enemy and pelt anyone standing still. But if there's an actual cavalry against you, they will be chased down every time, so you have to make sure to feather those suckers first. And that's Wolfhart's thing. Arrows. Lots of arrows, enough to blot out the sun, or at least take you from SPF 50 to SPF 30. In general, Marcus Wolfhart is what we like to call in the South, a bushwhacking son of a bitch. He gets crazy bonuses to ambush, and so long as half your armies are longbows, you'll be just fine. Just bring a few patsies to feed to the dinosaurs on the front line, and then let the yard shaft boys remind the rest why an entire island still uses the two finger salute. But your big objective here is not to further insult the French army or even the mass displacement of an indigenous people. It's to wipe Lake Placid from the planet and mount him on the wall as a lighthearted conversation piece. To do this, you'll need to form a league of extraordinary not-so-gentlemen, tracking them down across Lustria to form your party. Jorik Grimm, the dwarven master engineer. Roderick Le Anguille, the disgraced paladin. Hertwig van Hal, witch hunter extraordinaire the renowned hunter of crocodiles. Have a look at this little blood. Steve Irwin, and Kalara of Wydrioth, the foxy elven waystalker, each with their own unique skills from their own original factions, which is utter bupkis for anyone hoping for a Dogs of War DLC, as it's exactly the mechanic you'd love to see for it. This multi-special death squad will fight its way to dominance by completing set chapter objectives, so you can trigger a final showdown with the ghost of the jungle himself, Nakai the Wanderer, and then manifest destiny his scaly backside. But really, is Marcus Wolfhart, Hunt's Marshal of the Empire, the character for you? Do you snarl at modern Disney-fied movies where monsters are the good guys? Do you think that maybe the feral dominating a-hole who traps women in his death castle and tries to Stockholm Syndrome them might, in fact, be the baddie? If so, then try the guy with the big bow who hunts and kills dangerous monsters. On that note, deer season opens soon, so remember to wear your orange, kids. It's dangerous out there.
Also, the Hunter and the Beast DLC releases for Total War Warhammer 2 on September 11th. Thanks for watching.